Hey third graders, it's Mrs. Seals back for our next science lab. So last week we started our unit on earth science and we started that out by talking about a slow change that happens on our earth, which we called weathering. Hopefully you remember that weathering is the breaking down and wearing away of rocks over time. And remember that that's a slow change. That's a process that takes hundreds or thousands or maybe even millions of years. And we used the ramen noodles to represent the rock and we showed different ways that it could be broken down or worn away. So today we're going to continue our unit with earth science, but we are going to be talking about what we call rapid changes. So your target says I can investigate rapid changes in the Earth's surface. Whoops. So a rapid change is a change that affects the Earth's surface very quickly. So rapid is another word for quickly. So last week we talked about changes that are slow and take many, many years. This week we're talking about changes that happen quickly. These events have the ability to cause large changes in a very short period of time. So I will give you a second and see if you can think of any examples of rapid changes. Think about something that could occur very quickly in a very short amount of time that could cause a lot of changes to the earth. Pause the video when you're ready, come back and I'll show you some that I have thought of. Some examples of rapid changes are, whoops, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, landslides, tsunamis, floods, hurricanes, and forest fires. All of these are examples of rapid changes. These are things that occur very quickly over a short amount of time and they can change the surface of the earth. So today we're gonna focus on three of these. We're gonna focus on volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and landslides. And we're gonna kind of touch on tsunamis as well. So here's a model of the earth and you can see from this model that the earth is divided up in layers. The outer layer of the earth where we live is called the crust and underneath that is called the mantle. And then we have the outer core and the inner core. And the reason I bring this up is because two of the changes that we're talking about today, the volcanic eruptions and the earthquakes are caused by changes in the earth's crust. So the earth is made up of layers. The outer layer where we are is called the crust. The crust is made up of rocks, but the crust is not one solid piece. The crust is divided up into many sections called plates. And these plates fit together like puzzle pieces. These plates are always moving and shifting. The movement of these plates is what we call plate tectonics. So volcanic eruptions, let's start by talking about those. Volcanoes are openings in the Earth's surface through which lava can flow onto the surface during an eruption. Most volcanoes occur near the edges of plates where the plates are pulling away from one another. So like I just told you on the previous slide, you have all these different sections of the Earth's crust called plates, and they're always moving and shifting. So um, most volcanoes occur at the edges of these plates where they are slowly moving apart from each other because what that does is that creates a space or an opening in the Earth's crust where the lava can flow up through it. Underneath Earth's surface, rock can be so hot that it melts. This molten rock is called magma. And then once the magma reaches the Earth's surface, we call it lava. How can volcanic eruptions change the surface of the Earth? Volcanic eruptions can change the surface of the Earth in many ways. Flowing lava can destroy trees and other plant life. I'll show you a picture of that in just a minute. Animals that can't escape the lava sometimes 
are not able to survive. After a major volcano, surviving animals often are left with no food. So what they are forced to do is they are forced to move to a new location so that they are able to find food and water and things to, to be able to survive. Volcanic eruptions lay down thick, dense layers of rock, and this can form new islands. The Hawaiian Islands, I don't know if all of them, but I know at least some of the Hawaiian Islands are actually formed and created from um, layers of rock that have formed after volcanic eruptions. Also, one thing that I didn't add is that um, the soil that is left behind after a, a volcanic eruption is actually very healthy and nutrient rich soil. So a lot of these sound like very sad things and they are, you know, trees and plants and animals that die from these things or that they have the animals that have to escape or sometimes even people don't survive volcanic eruptions. Those things are very sad. But there are two you know, benefits to volcanic eruptions and that's these thick dense layers of rock can create new islands and also the very rich healthy soil that is left behind. Here are some pictures that um, show some destruction caused by, whoops, volcanic eruptions. Here we have you know, some trees and things that are covered in, in ash and and will not be able to survive. Here we also have some pictures of some things that have been um, covered by maybe moving lava. Here we have an aerial picture of lava, whoops, sorry, moving very slowly over the land, um, destroying everything in its path. And also the lava that, um, you know, is coming out of a volcano and moving, you know, it, it's so hot that it, it's on fire. So anything in its path that is flammable is going to also catch fire and burn. So a lot of times volcano, volcanoes can lead to um, forest fires, which is another rapid change because again, plants can be destroyed, animals can lo lose their homes and their food sources and things like that. So volcano, volcanoes are very destructive. So the important thing I want you to remember about volcanoes is that they are created when two, you have two plates that are moving apart very slowly and creating an opening in the earth's crust where magma can flow up and through. We're gonna model that in just a minute. So let's talk about earthquakes. An earthquake is the shaking of the earth that is caused by the release of energy stored in the crust of the earth. As one plate moves, the other, nearby puzzle pieces, oh, sorry. As one plate moves, it causes the other nearby puzzle pieces to also move. Sometimes these plates get caught on one another and pressure builds up. An earthquake occurs when this pressure is suddenly released. Most earthquakes are too small to be felt. So we talked about how a volcano is formed when the plates are moving apart from each other and creating an opening in the earth's crust. Earthquakes can be caused in one of two ways. This is caused when the plates are moving towards each other. They're pushing against each other. And one thing that can happen is one of the plates can slip and kind of cause one to go on top of the other and one to go underneath each other. Or when they're pushing against each other, it can cause them to very slowly grind up against each other. So either of those things can happen that can cause an earthquake. but it's important for you to know that it's caused when the plates are pushing against each other, okay? And this part, most earthquakes are too small to be felt. Many, many, many earthquakes happen all over the world multiple times a day. There are lots of earthquakes happening, but either they are too small to be felt or they are too far down underneath the earth's surface that we cannot feel them. So earthquakes can also change the surface of the earth in many ways. Earthquakes can cause a great deal of damage to roads and buildings. I'll show you a picture of that in just a minute. A major earthquake can cause the land to move several meters. That's a lot. One meter is about three feet. So several meters, that's a big change. 
An earthquake in the ocean floor can cause another rapid change called a tsunami. So look at that word tsunami. I know it starts with a T, but the T is silent. You pronounce it as tsunami. A tsunami is a fast moving wave that can bring a large volume of water rushing on shore. The waves of a tsunami carry the energy from the earthquake and can cause extreme damage to coastlines. So um, we're not just talking like about a normal wave that you would see at the beach. This is a wave that is very extremely large that can take over entire cities and cause lots and lots of damage. It can cause flooding. I'll show you a picture of an area that was hit by a tsunami in just a minute. So um, the only good thing I guess you could say about a tsunami is that they usually occur way out in the middle of the ocean where an earthquake has happened. So the earthquake happens under the ocean floor, it pushes water up and creates a tsunami. So the only good thing about that is that usually there is a pretty fair amount of warning time when there is going to be a tsunami. Um, because scientists who study the earth and look at satellites and radar, they will know when an earthquake has occurred out in the middle of the ocean and they can spot that it may have created a tsunami. So they can give a warning to people who live along the coastline of an area where it looks like the tsunami may be headed. So they can give a warning to these people. They could say, look, a tsunami's on its way. It's gonna be there in 12 hours. So these people have a little bit of time to evacuate. They could either evacuate further inland away from the coast, or they can get up to very high elevation um, so that the tsunami has less of a chance of kind of taking them over. Um, so they do have a little bit of warning time, but it's not a lot. It's usually maybe 12 hours, maybe a couple days, depending on how far out in the ocean the hurt the um, earthquake occurred and started the tsunami and how fast it's moving. Here are some pictures of earthquakes um, that have caused lots of damage. You can see the buildings have been destroyed. This building was split in half. Here is a picture of um, damage caused from a tsunami. You can see lots of flooding that very large wave has come in and taken over that community. Very sad when earthquakes and tsunamis happen. The last rapid change we're gonna talk about today is la our landslides. Landslides are a rapid change, but landslides are not created by um, a shift in the plates like volcanoes and earthquakes are. Landslide is a large mass of soil and rock that suddenly moves down the side of a steep surface, such as a mountain. So it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a large piece of land that slides down like a mountain or a hill or something like that. Landslides can occur in the ocean, along the coast and on shore. So they can happen anywhere where you have an area of higher elevation. Some landslides occur naturally. They can be caused by heavy rains and floods. Earthquakes and volcanoes can also cause landslides, but some landslides are caused by human activity. Excessive human development and construction along, along hillsides can also cause landslides. So when people are building lots of homes or um, businesses in on mountains or hills or areas where there are um, higher elevation, it can cause the soil to become um, looser and that can cause a landslide. So some are caused naturally by rain, floods, earthquakes, volcanoes. Some are caused by human activity. Landslides change the surface of the earth. They can cause a lot of damage to property, especially if there are areas where there are a lot of houses and people living. They can change the slope of a steep hill and the land at the foot of a hill as the land slides down and off the slope. So all we're saying is that you have a mountain, you have land that slides off of it. Now you have land built up there at the bottom of the hill or mountain, less land up here. So you're physically moving 
part of the land. Here are some pictures of landslides. Landslides are extremely destructive. Here's one that looks like the land has slid over a, a highway where people are driving. Um, you Here you have some homes that have been affected by landslides as well. Very destructive and not much warning time at all. So there's not a lot you can do. All right, so... Um, Today, all we're going to do is a quick little kind of investigation model to show, uh, to help us remember what is happening to the, the plates and the Earth's crust during a um, volcano and a, an earthquake. So the kids in class will be getting a paper plate with a little bit of icing and some um, graham cracker pieces. The icing is going to represent the mantle. Remember that is the area of the um, earth, the layer of the earth right below the crust. And the, the, the graham crackers are going to represent the earth's crust. So we are just going to do a quick little model to show how the crust moves or how the plates move during a volcano and during an earthquake. So during a volcano, remember a volcano is created when you have the plates that are spreading out, moving far apart, and that is creating an opening in the earth's surface where hot magma can come up through the earth's surface. Um, important to remember that these are, most volcanoes are found near plate boundaries where you have two plates spreading out. There's an area that's referred to as the ring of fire, which is pretty much surrounding the Pacific Ocean. This is where I believe 60% of volcanoes occur is in that part of the world because there are a lot of plate boundaries and a lot of activity with those plates moving apart from each other. All right, and then earthquakes, remember, earthquakes happen when you have plates pushing against each other and then one of two things can happen. Sometimes one plate slips, there we go, and one plate can go up on top of the other, causing the ground to shake or the plates are pushing against each other and grinding together. And this can also cause obviously the ground to shake. So volcan volcanoes are when the earth is moving apart. Earthquakes are when the earth is pushing together and either slipping or grinding. Please remember also, it's important to remember that um, both of these things can lead to landslides and a, an earthquake that occurs under the ocean floor can cause a tsunami. All right, I hope that you had fun learning about rapid changes to the Earth's surface. I will talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye.